the gods of the Maya created the world. The creatures that inhabited it squawked, chattered, and howled, but could not speak. The gods required people, people who would worship them and respect them. The first man the gods made from clay, but he was weak and fragile. Although he spoke, his words made no sense. They destroyed him. The second race, the gods made from wood. But these were bloodless beings without feelings or expression. Demons were sent to tear them apart. The gods attempted to create people one last time. To flour made from maize, they added their own blood and created at last a being that would worship them. The Maya owed their existence to the blood of their gods and a plant unique to their continent. They were the Maya, the children of the corn. Scattered throughout the tropical forests of Mexico and Central America are the ruins of Maya cities. Archaeological wonders built by a civilization that dominated this land for a thousand years. The Maya inhabited a land that the gods had richly filled with life. One animal in particular permeated their writing, religion, and folklore. The jaguar, the largest cat of the Americas, was respected and feared. In time, he would be given great human status and become a companion spirit to the most powerful kings. The jungle has a life and rhythm of its own, and its creatures have evolved to thrive in a climate of intense heat and violent storms. This is the middle world between the sky and the underworld. Here is no gentle succession of seasons, just the months of drought and the months of rain. Every creature, human and animal, had to adapt to the climate of the middle world or die. In the upper world, the chief predator was the harpy eagle. It was lord of the sky as the jaguar was lord of the earth. And the temples of the lords of mankind joined earth, sky, and underworld, giving humans their place in the cosmos. At the height of their culture, 1,200 years ago, the Maya were great astronomers, mathematicians, and timekeepers. They developed an elaborate written language and a calendar that could predict celestial cycles to within one day every 6,000 years. The art of the Maya reflected the riches of the world around them. Animal symbols represented cities, kings, and important events.
Great rituals marked moments such as the spring and autumn equinox. But where did these people come from? And how did they evolve such a distinctive culture in the heart of a tropical forest? They came from the north. Some 12,000 years ago, people moved south from the high mountain plateaus of Mexico into the tropical lowlands of Central America. They came down from the lakes, woods, and deserts of the mountains into the steamy forests of Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, and El Salvador. first forest people depended on their ability to hunt. The forest pig, the collared peccary, was one such target, but the human hunters were seldom alone. Four thousand years ago, the hunter turned farmer. This was the beginning of slash and burn agriculture. This was the foundation of a new life. Clearings were made in the forest to make way for fields and small settlements. The rich ashes of the fallen forest giants fertilized the new planting. The ancestors of the Maya brought corn domesticated in the highlands of Mexico into the forest. This became their staple crop and the key to their success. The Maya were indeed children of the corn. Two other crops, squash and beans, also became part of their staple diet. It was a successful combination. At their peak, at least 10 million people inhabited this land. Maize passes through the human gut without giving up much of its nutritional value. But these people knew that maize could be better digested if lime and water were added to it. The powdered lime produced from the limestone rocks on which the Maya lived greatly enhanced the protein value of maize flour. It was a recipe critical to their success. In large areas of the northern forest, rivers are hidden under the porous limestone, visible only in large sinkholes known as cenotes and small forest pools. Here, fish crowd the precious waters, giving birth to live young, an evolutionary advantage in the struggle to survive.
Where the pools and rivers are accessible, the largest forest animal, the tapir, a relative of the horse, enters to feed on the waterweed. Large cities like Chichen Itza and Ushmal were built close to these sources of water. The limestone bedrock that hid the precious waters of the northern region provided the ideal building materials for their spectacular architecture. Relatively soft when first quarried, it could be easily cut into blocks before hardening in the air. This stone allowed people without metal tools to build immense structures with precision and detail that still survive. The Maya developed myths that celebrated cunning and wit. They were about survival in a world where danger was everywhere and had divine power. The jaguar was a sacred animal, a successful predator competing with the Maya for food and even at times killing the people themselves. The jaguar was also revered because it could hunt both day and night. The night was a time of the unknown. It belonged to the spirit world. The rare black jaguar must have been particularly feared, almost invisible at night. The prehensile-tailed porcupine dines on figs. Two-thirds of the animals of the Maya jungle are nocturnal. Many of these creatures have evolved a lifestyle in the trees. It's safer. The silky anteater, no bigger than a squirrel, has hind feet specialized for climbing. The foot pads are split in half for grasping branches and vines. Of all the forest cats, the margay is the best adapted to hunting at night. With large eyes and superb hearing, this agile predator has evolved to move effortlessly through the canopy. The animals of the forest frequently appeared in the art of the Maya. They became the names of kings, of cities, of months of the year. Bats and bat gods were a common theme. The bat represented the fourth month in the Maya year, known as Tzatz, and also the symbol of the city of Copan. The vampire shares these forests with over 200 other species of bat. They inhabit the limestone caves of the underworld. Each has its own way of collecting food.
Many of the rainforest plants bloom in the evening and rely on bats for pollination. Like birds of the night, they perform a wider role, dispersing pollen and seeds across the forest. In Maya myth, the bat represented the unknown, the night, the dark. Kamatsots was the great killer bat, adorned with crossbones on his wings. In his underworld lair, all who entered were doomed. The Maya Bible, the Popol Vuh, describes a legendary battle between Kamatsots, the killer bat, and the mythical twin ancestors of the Maya, the hero twins. The brothers entered the spirit world in order to avenge the death of their father and uncle, but the lords of the underworld determined to kill them. The brothers hid that night in a blowpipe, but in the early hours, one of them cautiously put his head out to check for the dawn light. Hearing him, Kamatsots descended and decapitated him. Rejoicing, the lords of the underworld carried off the head to the ceremonial ball court, but they were tricked. The surviving brother managed to gain possession of the head and replaced it with a gourd. The gods were defeated and his brother restored to life. A ball game is always a battle between opposing forces, but in the Maya's game, the balance of the world was in play. This game could end in death. A player's skull might be covered in rubber and used for the game. Kingdoms could fall. The Maya divided the universe into layers, heaven, earth, and the underworld. At the center of their world and bridging the layers was the tree of life. The giant Seba, the largest tree in the forest, connected the heavens with the underworld. The Maya believed that the souls of the dead ascended through the roots of the Seba and climbed the tree to reach the heavens above. Snakes were able to journey between the world of the living and the spirit world below. They were the guardians of the underworld. Below the forests of the Maya are huge limestone cave systems. Rivers run underground for hundreds of miles through extraordinary rock formations. These rivers flow into salt water trapped since the last ice age. Here, strange gases accumulate. 
In this labyrinth of the underworld live creatures that never see the light of day, crabs that have no need for protective pigment, and blind cave fish. In these caves, the Maya worshipped their gods. These pots represent the Saber tree, the tree of life at the center of the Maya world, with its roots in the underworld and its branches in the heavens. Juvenile Saber trees are covered in spines as protection from grazing animals. As the tree matures, it loses its spines its leaves safe high up in the canopy. The buttress roots of the saber are home to animals from the underworld, tiny sack-winged bats, one of the few species that roost in the daylight. Sackwings have a complex social system. Males have harems of up to nine females. At dawn, they return to their territorial roost and sing elaborate love songs. This wards off rival males and keeps the females together, attentive to the male's advances. Extending his wing, he opens a scent gland, wafting a perfume towards his mate. This intoxicating cologne reinforces the family bond. The division of the Maya mythical world into three layers mirrored the natural world. But the middle world, the forest, has its own vertical divisions, and each layer has its own forms of life. Termites build elaborate highways constructed of cellulose on the outside of trees. Far above the ground, their nests are secure from most predators. The colony is guarded by a soldier caste. Equipped with elongated snouts, the soldiers defend the colony by spraying intruders with noxious chemicals. One of the few predators to brave this army is the tamandua, an arboreal anteater with a prehensile tail, powerful enough to support both the mother's weight and that of her offspring. Equipped with powerful claws, she can rapidly cut open the cement-like covering and lap up the termites with her sticky tongue. She has a matter of minutes before the soldiers arrive in serious numbers and she's repelled. of the tree of life, the saber, towers above the canopy.
This lofty perch is a favorite nesting site for the harpy eagle. The chick will spend six months in the nest. Few birds spend so long before learning to fly. The harpy, lord of the air and largest eagle in the world, kills substantial mammals such as sloths and monkeys. It takes two years before the chick's able to dismember such large prey for itself and begin an independent life. Growing up in one place surrounded by carrion presents a special problem for the chick. The young bird is plagued by insects. The mother's solution is to select young leaves laden with natural insecticide and carry them back to the nest. This regal bird, predator of the forest canopy, inspired Maya warriors. Its feathers adorned their chiefs who believed the spirit of this great bird would lead them to victory in war against neighboring cities. War was the responsibility of kings. Captives were sacrificed to repay the blood debt of the Maya to their gods. The lords of the sky were their guides and guardians. gods needed blood, the land needed water. Blood and water, seasons and sacrifice were the Maya obsessions. The hook nose of Chak, the rain god, dominated the buildings of the city of Ushmal. For the marked dry and wet seasons dictated not only the success of their precious corn, but also an appropriate time for war. Measurements of time were carved into the walls of their buildings. Days, months and years computed with astonishing accuracy. So exact was the planning of these massive temples that on the autumn and spring equinox, a serpent shadow descended the pyramid of Chichen Itza, making its way into the underworld. observatories to record the movement of the stars and planets. Windows were lined up precisely with the passage of Venus, the brightest and most important planet. They calculated that it took Venus 584 days to transform from being a morning to evening star and back again. Where the Greeks saw star constellations like Orion and Gemini, the Maya read patterns from their own world, the turtle, and wild pigs mating. To the Maya, this was not simply the passage of stars. The celestial bodies were guided by the gods, reenacting mythical events from the start of time.
night was the time when mortals communicated with the supernatural. It was the privilege of royalty to let blood. of visions, royal blood transcending the middle world, binding the universe with his sacrifice. A great king would bring his people success in war and abundant harvests. revolved around the coming of the rains. The Maya understood very well the life-giving power of the clouds, given or withheld by the gods. The long drought of February to May ended with violent cleansing storms drenching everything. The harpy eagle chick, now five months old, experiences rain for the first time. Its plumage is washed clean and the jungle is transformed. Once more, the gods provided the forests with life-giving water. The Maya revered those animals that were able to cross the boundaries between worlds. That included the boundary between land and water. Turtles, though unlikely prey for a jaguar, were an important part of Maya diet. The rainy season is not the easiest time for a jaguar, but creatures that enjoy fruit get an immediate benefit. Many of the forest animals timed their breeding to coincide with this plentiful harvest.
One of the smallest of the toucans, an arasari, rears its young on the flush of insects that come with the rains. Crops would grow on virgin land burned off before the rains, but the land was soon exhausted. As the population grew, they began farming more intensively, terracing and irrigating. Domesticated animals, turkeys, dogs and ducks, supplemented the vegetable diet with protein. This land was more densely populated than Renaissance Italy or France at the time of the revolution. Dogs were not only used for hunting, the Maya even bred a variety of dog for eating. They also cultivated bees. These primitive stingless bees were collected from the forest and housed in hollow logs. The honey was used to make an alcoholic drink important in ritual. While some workers collect nectar and pollen, others attend the queen in the brood chamber. This single female is responsible for all the eggs in the colony. After the egg is laid and provisioned with pollen and nectar, workers seal off the chamber. Later, they will attend and nurture the growing larva. With relative ease and complete safety, the colony is divided and a new one established. It was a simple and productive partnership. Based on this growing domestic wealth, the Maya cities flourished and expanded. Cocoa beans became currency, and the Maya kept accounts. They developed a sophisticated system of writing and numbering. Bars represented the number five, dots the unit of one. Other symbols indicated tribute, the profits of war. At their peak, 1,200 years ago, there were hundreds of Maya cities and towns scattered over an area the size of Britain. But while some cities flourished, others had sown the seeds of their own decline. The land was overpopulated. They were taking more food and firewood than could be sustained, and still there was a need for water. To maintain the balance of nature, the Maya of Chichen Itza made precious offerings into their sacred well. Ever more valuable ornaments of jade and imported gold were destroyed and offered to the gods. had made people from their own blood. But how much blood had to be repaid? If the function of a king was to keep nature in balance, then kings might now, perhaps, appear useless. As the Maya became ever more populous, so their demands on the land increased and the hardships of the seasons became greater. 
1100 years ago, the majority of the tropical forest had been cleared. The people who lived there struggled to survive, as did the wildlife, trapped in ever smaller pockets of jungle. The forests could not sustain an ever-increasing human population. But that was not the only reason for the collapse of the Maya. Each city suffered its own catastrophe. There are signs of starvation and agricultural collapse. As the population grew, the land was being worked to death. As the forest was cleared, so the animals that the Maya hunted to supplement their farming also became scarce. Turtles were one of the last famine foods. Devastating wars swept the region as rulers fought for the land of rival cities in a struggle for survival. This civilization was born 200 years before the Roman Empire began. It was still flourishing 400 years after the barbarians sacked Rome. But now it was dying. The Maya thrived in the rich forests of Mexico and Central America. The jaguar was revered, an animal companion spirit to accompany kings. But now, that relationship was at an end. The burgeoning aristocracy demanded ever more of their peoples and their forests. On the inauguration of the 16th and last king of the city of Copan, 15 jaguars were sacrificed in honor of the previous rulers. Perhaps this was a last desperate act of a failing aristocracy, offering the creature they most revered to enlist the support of the ancestral gods. In the centuries that followed, nature reclaimed the land of the Maya. The secrets of this great civilization would remain hidden in the jungle for hundreds of years, a jungle that became so dense that even the memory of these great cities and the millions of people who lived here disappeared.
East of the lands of the Maya is the Caribbean Sea, the home of the Taino, a mysterious and forgotten people. They evolved a culture very different from that of the Maya, one that depended on the riches of the sea. The next episode of Spirits of the Jaguar reveals their story.